last talk of today. Uh, it will be by William Michel. He will be to talking about the uh, cycle surrounding spheres in alpha bounded diagrams. Okay. Right. Thank you. So this is joint work with uh, Daniel, PM, Saket, Rouhani, and, and Mirav. Um, so what are we talking about here? Uh, we're starting with a uh, directed feedback Bertha set and a uh, directed feedback R set. So the problem, so probably all of you know, so you have a diagram D and integer K, and the question is, can we remove K vertices or arcs in the feedback arc set problems to make D a cyclic? <coughs> so this has been shown to be FPT uh, so in 2008, um, but uh, the question of the existence of a polynomial kernel is uh, quite an interesting one and it's uh, widely open. Um, and basically the main uh, result we have on this is uh, what happened in the case of tournament. So as may have explained uh, earlier today, uh, for the directed feedback vertex set, it's uh, just a three eating set problem uh, because the induced cycles are triangles. Uh, but for arc set, it's a bit different. And uh, in this setting, we know that there exists a linear kernel for directed feedback arc set in tournament. And this is a result of uh, BC et al. in 2011. And the question we're interested in today is, can we extend this result to, so D alpha, this is the class of uh, bonded, so of digraph with independent number bonded by alpha, okay? And uh, so Saket talked about this class uh, for the problem session, but uh, let me say it again. So the independence number is the size of the largest independent set. Uh, so it's the size of the large, uh, largest set without any uh, arc between these vertices. Uh, yeah, so that's it. All right, so first, <coughs> the first remark uh, is that if you have a graph uh, with bounded independence number by alpha, um, every induced cycle is smaller than two alpha plus one. Okay, so you just look at the set of vertices as distance two, and then you can find an arc if it's bigger than this. Um, so it means again that the problem for directed feedback vertex set is an eating set problem. Okay, so it's interesting, but it's not exactly what we would try to look. So for all of the remaining of the talk, we'll just focus on the directed feedback arc set uh, in this class of graph. And so recently, so a subset of the quarters, so basically just uh, everyone except uh, Daniel and myself, uh, prove that uh, they have a sub-exponential algorithm for DFAS uh, on this class of diagram. Right? Right? And uh, the result I'm showing today is that we can find a polynomial kernel um, in this class. Right? Okay. So the first thing uh, we will do is since every, since the induced cycles are small, actually what we're able to find is a set S. Uh, we able to show the following thing. Either we can find a set S of size at most uh, 2 alpha plus 1 times K, uh, so that removing this set makes a digraph acyclic, or we can say it's a no instance, right? And the proof is very simple. Uh, so you start with your digraph D, right? and then you say, okay, I know that if there is a, a cycle, there is a small directed cycle, so I just pick the vertices of this cycle, remove them, and then start over again. And if I do this more than k times, it means I have k vertex disjoint directed cycles, so the answer is no. And if I stop before k times, then since every one of these cycles are small, then my set S is of bounded size. Right. Okay. So basically now we have a small set S, which is an approximate solution, and there is the rest. And basically, um, the way we look at this is these vertices, they're only useful to connect the vertices above, okay, for our problem. Right, and so the goal here is to keep enough information in R uh, to understand the connectivity of these points in the general diagram. Right, so let me be a bit more precise. Um, so we will start by defining, which is the main tool of our uh, result, which is a k-cut preserving set. So we say that S is a k-cut preserving set uh, for some pair of vertices uv, if any UV cut, uh, so in the digraph induced by S, smaller than K, so only in the small cuts, um, is a UV cut in D. All right? And, and then the lemma that we have uh, is that if D is a digraph uh, belonging to D alpha, and uh, D is acyclic, so this is very important, um, then for any pair of vertices, uh, there exists a K cut preserving set of size polynomial in K. Okay? So K to D alpha. All right. So before showing you how we get the kernels from this lemma, let, let just me talk about uh, this definition in the case of, of tournaments. All right, so suppose now you have a transitive tournament, and then you have two vertices, u and v. All right, and you want to find a k-cut preserving set 
for these, these two vertices, right? So since, that, since the tournament is transitive, you have an enumeration of the vertices so that all the arcs go into one direction. So this is what people call the topological order, usually, and then this is what I represented here. And for this order, if you want to go from u to v, uh, the vertices before u and the vertices after v doesn't uh, play any role. So the picture is the following. And now you have to, um, so you want to understand, understand the cut of size less than k between u and v. So here you have two cases. Either you have a lot of vertices in between, okay, so let's say more than k. Um, so then it means that there is no k cut from u to v, right? So in that, uh, in that case, the only information you need to keep is the fact that there is no k arc cut, right? So if you, if you keep k plus one vertices in the middle, in between, then this would be enough. Because if you have k plus one vertices in between, you don't have any k-arc cut. And so this set is a k-cut preserving set. Right. Right, so, so this is the first case when you have a lot of vertices between u and v. And when you have few vertices, let's say less than k, then you just keep all of them. Right? So the subgraph is the full graph. And of course, uh, if you take the full graph, then it satisfies the, the k-cut uh, preserving um, properties. Right. Right, so this is, this is what we do uh, for tournaments, and I will come back later on how to prove it for um, bounded alpha, but first let me show you how we use this tool, and especially the, the previous lemma, okay, um, to find a kernel. Right, so we start, okay, so we start as I said before, so greedily we can find a set S so that removing S uh, given a cyclic digraph, and that S is like of size polynomial in K, which is linear actually. Um, and now, so this is so this is what happened. Okay. All right. So so this is what I explained before. Okay, this is S. And now every time I pick two vertices, let's say U and V, I I want to understand how or participate to the connectivity from u to v, basically. So what I do is that I look at the digraph obtained by taking all r, adding the vertex u and all of its out neighbors, and the vertex v and all of its in neighbors. Okay, so this is what I call uh, u plus and uh, v minus. Okay, so the, this digraph, so r plus u and, and v, is uh, an acyclic digraph. Um, and here we take, uh, like this is what I call SUV, so a K cut preserving set here. Right. Okay, so for any pair of vertices in S, so for any ordered pair actually, we do it for U and V and for V and U, and also for U plus and U minus. Um, so we take all these sets, each of these sets has size polynomial in K, we have a polynomial number of these sets, uh, so at the end what we have is a subgraph of D uh, of size uh, polynomial in K. Right, so we take S and the union of all of these sets, and I claim that this is our kernel. Right, so why is it a kernel? Well, okay, let's, let's show this. It's actually not very difficult. Um, so first, like, since it, it is a subgraph, there is one direction which is trivial, and let, so let us prove the, the, the other direction. So suppose you have A, which is a solution in D prime, so the reduced set, uh, but not the solution in D for the feedback arc set. Right, so suppose so you have a cycle C uh, in S. I mean, you have a cycle C, and you know that this cycle must intersect S by definition of S. So let me do something like this. Okay. Right, so S1, S2, and S3. So yeah, so the cycles look like this. So you go from S1 to S2, then S2 to S3, uh, only using the vertices in L, right? And the rest. Okay. And now, since you took a K cut preserving set for the, this digraph with S1 here and S2 here, what it means is that if in D minus A you have a pass from S1 to S2, you also have one in D prime minus A, right? By definition of a K-cut preserving set. Uh, so basically what you have is you have a pass from S1 to S2, a pass from S2 to S3, and then a pass from S3 to S1. So you have a closed walk and thus you have a cycle. Right, so, yeah, so, and this is the proof. All right, so this is, okay, this is good. And uh, now the question is, uh, how do we find these small cut preserving set in a digraph? And, and this is actually the, the hard part of the proof. Uh, and, and also the one that I will not show completely. All right, so yeah, so now we've fixed two vertices U and V and how we'll try to explain to you how we can find such a set. So th there are two cases, a bit like uh, how I explain it for, for tournaments. Uh, first, yeah, let me say, so we know how it works for tournaments and we know that 
our graph as bounded alpha, so the, the natural thing here is to do an induction on alpha, right? Because the class of, I mean, tournaments are uh, that graph with alpha is equal to one, so if we can reduce alpha in a finite number of steps, then, then we would win. So how do we do this? Um, the first thing to realize is that if there is k plus one vertex digit UV path, um, then as I said before, keeping all of these paths is a k, uh, k, set is a k cut preserving set, right? Because if you have k plus one uh, vertex disjoint path from u to v, then there is no k arc cut. Okay, so just keeping enough information to know that there is no k arc cut is enough. All right. So how can we uh, keep this information in like small place? Then actually we just need to prove that these paths are short, and, and this is quite easy to see uh, because. So I remember that we're in a cyclic digraph, and this is very important. So if, for example, the, the path above is big, it means that there is an arc in between. And because it is a cyclic, this arc must go into the, the same direction as the path. Right? So you have a shortcut here. So you can assume that all of these paths, these k plus 1 paths, are small. So you just keep all of these uh, paths, and, and it, it gives you a k-cut preserving set of, of small size. So this is the case, and this is the easy case when you have a lot of paths between two vertices. And the question is, uh, what happens when the connectivity is small, right? And what can we do about this, right? And this is where we try to use induction. So for example, suppose that you have U and V, and then there is a uh, minimum cut set, vertex cut set, uh, C1 and C2, right? So now we will um, partition the, the digraph into a separate uh, set of vertices. So for every i, not u i, the set of vertices on a path from u to c i. And more precisely, a path, so these paths, they, they do not intersect with uh, c2 here, OK? So these are only the paths going from u to c1 without visiting c2, all right? So you do the same thing for, for uh, c2. This gives you u2. And then you do the same thing for paths from c1 to v and paths from c2 to v. And finally, uh, you take the one, so the, the Cij, which are the set of vertices on a path from Ci to Cj. Right. And what I claim is that if I take a kicker preserving set for, like, say, u1, c1 in u1, u1, c2 in u2, c2, uh, v, etc., and c1, c2 in, uh, okay, c2, c1 in c2, 1, for example, then taking the union of all these kicker preserving sets give you a kicker preserving set for uv. Right. And how do you prove this? Well, basically, if you, look at, um, if you look at any pass uh, from u to v, um, because uh, this c1, c2 is a vertex cut, then means that these paths intersect with this. So let's, let's look at this simple example. Let's say it intersects c1. So you have a pass from uh, u to v. OK? Um, and then if you. And now, since you, you, you've taken a k-cut preserving set here, if you have a set of k arcs which do not disconnect these two, vert these two vertices in this set, uh, then it means that you can go from here to here in the reduced one, and you can do the same thing here. Right? So basically, so in order to uh, find a k-cut preserving set from u to v, we only need to find a k-cut preserving set from all of these points. Right? And uh, the question now is, uh, how, why, why do we gain here? Well, we, we don't gain. We almost gain. And, and the first thing to note is that if you look at uh, u1, for example, and then you look at the set of vertices of u1 except the two extremities, so u and c1, then inside here, the independence number decreases. Right? So this is what we want. Okay? And why is that? It's that suppose, for example, that there is a vertex okay, which is adjacent to v among these vertices between u and c1. Okay? So u1 minus these two vertices. Uh, so here you have two cases, so either the, the arc is going towards V, and it means that um, C1, C2 is not a vertex cut here, um, or the arc is going uh, uh, okay, from V, and then it means that uh, you can find a directed cycle here, right? because there is a path from this vertex to C1 and from C1 to V, because like, this is a minimum vertex cut. Right? Okay. Right. okay, so here, in a, in a sense, so we have to deal with u and c1, and this is very technical, and I don't want to go into details, but morally, alpha decreases here, and we have. The bad thing, however, is this, okay? So, of course, what I said before works for u1, u2, it works for v1, v2, but for cij, it doesn't work. So, for example, you can have something like this, so a path from c1 to c2, uh, which, so that the vertices in here are, can be adjacent to both u and v, right? 
in, in these specific settings. Right. So this approach doesn't work, and um, how, do we, how do we deal with this? Well, we do the usual trick when you try to prove something by induction, is that you prove something stronger. And in fact, so we will need to strengthen uh, our definition of a k-cut preserving set, uh, and this is the, the, final, uh, the final version. So we say that a k -cut so S is a k-cut preserving set for the, the, the pair u and v. If any pass uh, p in d, can be decomposed uh, as like uh, in the following sense. So p is, is decomposed into p1 p until pj. That's um, you have two. Basically, you have two type of subpaths pi. So either you have a black subpath which corresponds to uh, let's say pass for which all of the vertices belong to S. All right. So these are the good subpaths in a way. Uh, or you have a red subpath. Uh, and for these, uh, you, you don't need that all of the vertices belong to S, but just the extremal points. Um, and what you require in this case is that you can replace these paths by k plus one um, vertex disjoint paths between the same extremities in S. Right. Okay. So yeah. So that's the idea. So that's the idea. And then yeah. Okay. So so this is the full definition, and, and with this definition we allowed uh, we we able to prove the induction. I won't do it, but l just let me show you first that this definition indeed. Uh, is a stronger one, so it implies the, the previous one. So what happens is, so you suppose that um, S is a k-cut preserving set for UV, uh, then we want to show that all the cuts in DS are cuts in, all the cuts smaller than k in DS are cuts uh, in uh, D minus A, right, in D basically. So what do you do? So you suppose it's not the case, so uh, A is a cut in DS between U and V, but it's not a cut in, uh, in D, so suppose you have the, a pass from uh, u to v in d, in d minus a, right? So because we are, so by definition of a cut preserving set, uh, we have this decomposition of this pass into this like red and, and, and black uh, subpass, okay? So every red subpass can be replaced by k plus one vertex division pass from between the extremities of this path, right? And now if you look at how uh, the set A intersect uh, this picture, well, you know it doesn't intersect uh, the, the black path by definition. Um, and since you have k plus one path uh, between, like to replace every red path, you know that at least one of those is not uh, intersected by this, by this set A, and so you can replace this thing, and actually you have a, a path from u to v in d of s minus a, right? So this is a contradiction. Okay. Uh, so, th so this is the okay. So this is to imply that this is a stronger notion. And now, actually, what we prove is that for this definition of a k-cut preserving set, uh, the, the the following theorem holds: that if d belongs to d alpha and d is acyclic, then for any pair you can find such a such a set uh, of size like k to the f of alpha. Right. Okay. Okay. So, so this gives basically um, the proof of uh, the kernel for the directed feedback offset. Um, and so the question is, for, for this proof, we developed this very nice tool of a k-cut preserving set, and can we use this tool to prove uh, other results? So the, the first candidate here is a DOCT, so directed odd cycle transversal. So the question now is to eat with k arcs uh, every odd cycle, I mean every directed odd cycles in a graph. So this question is very different, like in general setting, because it has been proved to be W non hard. Uh, however, in our cases and with our tools, uh, we can show a kernel of size okay, polynomial. Uh, and in fact, we're able to show even something a bit, a bit stronger than this, because if you look at odd cycle of our day, the cycle of size 1 mod 2, okay? And actually, we can replace 2 with, any, with everything we want, okay? So we can find cycle of, uh, of length 1 mod p, uh, and we can find a kernel for this. Uh, so, funny enough, like, we cannot replace the one, okay? So, I mean, at least we're not able to, and then, like, it's, we're sure that the, our approach cannot work, okay? So, okay, but we don't have any, like, harness result for this. All right, so how does this work? Well, it works a bit like the, the proof for directed feedback access. So, if you remember directed feedback access, the proof was first you find small cycles, okay? So, a collection of small cycles that gives you an approximate solution. And then you keep enough information in the rest to understand the connectivity, right? So here what we need to say is that uh, we need to find small cycle of length 1 mod p if such a cycle exists. And then we need to, find, to keep enough information in the rest not to keep 
not to know if there is a pass between two vertices, but if there is a pass of a certain length, modulo p, between two vertices. And, and to do this, uh, we'll take a look at um, something which is pretty not so correlated, but some digraph coloring uh, statement. So you might know that the first one, uh, it's quite famous, quite old. Uh, it's also a very nice characterization of a graph which are correct number k. So this is a term by Galea, Hasse, Roy, and Vitaver, and they all proved this in the 60s. And they say basically that if you have a graph which chromatic number, so the chromatic number of the underlying graph, so you forget about the orientation, if this is bigger than k, then you have a pass of length k, a directed pass of length k, I mean, on k vertices. Okay? So this is the first statement, and the second statement is that, uh, is one of Chen et al. 2015, that if d is strongly connected, uh, and the chromatic number is bigger than p plus 1, then you have a cycle of length 1 mod p, right? which is the cycle that we want to find. Um, and what's the uh, relation between coloring and this is that if you have a digraph of uh, independence number bounded by alpha, then whenever you bound the chromatic number of this digraph, and actually you bound the size. Okay? Because saying that a graph has a uh, chromatic number bounded by k means you can cover the, the, all the vertices with k independent set, and if they're all small, then you can cover, like the whole graph is small, basically. And this is what happened here. Right, so, so we can restate the, the, the two theorems as follows. So if in, in d alpha, if d is bigger than, uh, if the size of d is bigger than k times alpha, then d contains a pass on k vertices. Uh, and if it's strongly connected and bigger than p plus 1 alpha, then d contains a cycle of length 1 mod p. Right, so, this. so these are the two theorems that we uh, need in order to adapt our approach um, uh, to, the set, to the setting that I told, like uh, for eating cycle of length 1 mod p. Okay, so all right, what is the first lemma here? Uh, is that if d belongs to d alpha and contains a cycle of length 1 mod p, then such a cycle exists on less than, uh, okay, something interesting, on less than uh, p alpha plus 1 square vertices, right? So if there is a cycle of length 1 mod p, there is a short one. And the proof is quite easy, so you, you take your cycle uh, and then you look at uh, the set of vertices at distance alpha plus 1 p on this cycle. Right, so because this cycle is big, you know you have more than alpha plus one of these red vertices, uh, which means that you can find an arc between two of these. Uh, and now, because you're taking these vertices far away on the cycle, no matter what the orientation of this, uh, of the, of this arc, you will get a large directed cycle, so, which is a large, strongly connected component, and you can find a smaller, basically, you can apply the previous result to find a, a smaller cycle of length one mod p here. Um, so yeah, so previously we had, like, if you have a cycle, then you have a short cycle, and here it's the, the same thing applied. If you have a cycle of length 1 mod p, you have a short one. Um, so we can do the, the, the same algorithm, greedily picking these small, these small cycles, uh, and then obtain a set, of, a set S of size at most um, keep, I mean, this number, so kp times alpha plus 1 square, uh, that removing S doesn't have any cycle of length 1 mod p, right? And here, so, so this is basically the same picture, um, so here, what happens is that when you remove this thing, you're not sure that the rest is uh, acyclic anymore, but basically you're sure that the connected components are small. And for us, I mean, in this talk, it means the same thing. So if we are, I mean, with a bit of struggle, we can basically adapt all the arguments uh, to, to this setting here. Um, so forget about small, strongly connected component, just think about the, like what's below S as a cyclic, okay? And so we, we will be able to find our K-cut preserving set here. All right, so this is the first part of the algorithm. Uh, and now, so yeah. So now we have this, and then basically these vertices, they don't, um, like, in a way, it's, it, like, it was a bit like before. So before, we, we wanted only to find, eno to keep enough information here to understand the like the connectivity here. Basically, if I remove k arcs, do I still have a pass between these two guys? And now we want to understand the same thing, but now the question is, if I remove k arcs, do I still have a pass of a certain length between these two guys, right? Um, and to do this, we need the, the following lemma, which says that if you have many vertex disjoint paths, so still we're in, in digraph d belonging to the alpha, and if you have p square alpha a vertex disjoint pass between u and v, then actually you can find one of each of every length modulo p from u to v using only this set of vertices. Right? Okay, so how you do this? Uh, so first you apply pigeonhole and you say, okay, 
I can have p alpha pass of the same length modulo p. Okay, there is, so this is why you have p squared. Uh, and now if I look at the first vertices on these paths, uh, they form a set of size uh, p alpha, right? So here we apply galois roy uh, theorem, and then we say, oh, but now I can find a pass of length p here. Okay, and so all of these paths um, so have the same length modulo, let's say, uh, modulo p, so let's say zero. So now if I want to find a pass of length zero, then I just do this. Uh, if I want to find a pass of length one, I just go here, go down here, and then go here. And then if I want to pass of length two, I just go there, et cetera, et cetera. So I can use these paths uh, uh, basically to find a pass of any length modulo p uh, inside these set of vertices, right? All right. <laughs> it's almost over. Um, so this is the, <laughs> so we're very close to the end, don't worry. So how do we use this thing? Uh, so before we, we say, okay, if I keep a okay, uh, cut preserving set between these two vertices, then I have enough information. And actually what we will do here now is I will find, we'll keep a k prime cut preserving for k prime bigger than k, but still polynomial. So here, for example, let's say uh, k plus p alpha. Um, and then, so if I keep this k plus p alpha cut preserving set for uv, then for any set A of a most k arcs, if there exists a uv pass of length r modulo p in d minus a, then such a pass exists in ds minus a. So, right, so the, the same property preserved, so you preserve not only the existence of a pass, but the existence of a pass of a certain length. All right, so how you do it, so you take your path, and then you apply this decomposition between red and black, and you know that for red, it means that, okay, the, the, the black belong to S, so you're happy with them. And the red, you know you can replace them with K plus P square alpha, right? Uh, and now, when you look at what is the intersection of A with all these paths, since A is of size K, you know that there are uh, at least P square alpha paths available for you to replace. And inside this one, you apply the previous lemma, and you know that you can find one of every length. Right. Okay. One time. Um, yeah, and so that's the point. Okay, and now we can finish by just explaining the theorem, but exactly the same. So um, you find, okay, so what you do, so you do this greedy argument uh, on s short cycle of length one mod p, uh, then you have this, this set S, uh, and then for any, uh, now for any pair, you just look at what happened of the rest of the graph with this pair in the same setting as before, and then you keep uh, k prime cut preserving set for uv, so k is very large. Uh, and then taking the, the full, okay, the set, the full graph induced by S and all these set gives you the kernel, right? And so here I'm, I'm a bit lying. I mean, there's an argument I didn't make, but I would just say it shortly. Um, is that, okay, so now you, you do the same, you do the exact same argument. So you suppose you have a, let's say, a set, okay, a set of arcs, let's say A, and then you find a, uh, a pass of length one mod p uh, in in the full graph uh, d, and the question is, does there exist such a pass in d prime? And the answer is yes. And the way you do it is you do it exactly the same way. So you have this, um, so you have this path. So you have this set of vertices uh, s1, s2, s3, which is the intersection of this, this cycle with s. Okay, and then you know that you have a pass from here to here, and with the previous lemma, because you 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 took a k prime cut preserving set for this pair, uh, you know you can find a pass of the same length. Okay, so the only thing I didn't argue here is that these paths don't intersect. Um, so before, we only cared about a closed work implied the cycle, so it was fine. Here, we need a bit, of more, bit more of argument, but like the, the proof is just like, actually, this is the whole proof. You just need to fight a bit with the constant, and if you take k prime big enough, actually, you can do it. Right. And uh, as the climatization stop, uh, so is my talk. So thank you for your attention. So for what? So you have this kernel for D of A's, right? Yes. So the independent. No, no, no. It's the same because it's a subgraph. It's a subgraph. Yeah, I mean a subgraph induced. So you have a, a number of vertices and you take the, the graph induced by these vertices. So you don't remove arcs. Okay. So it's the same thing. So you would have to say that uh, sub exponential algorithm and get rid of n to yeah. the one.
Sure. So your result about hitting cycles that are of length one month yeah. it reminds me of the group feedback critics have problem in underwriting graphs mm -hmm. where you can uh, hit the cycles which are non-zero uh, if you do addition of the labels of your group okay. along these edges. Mm -hmm. Is there any reason to believe that um, like the group setting couldn't be made to work in these bound independent diagrams? Um, so again, so you have so what is the so you have a group? I so don't know the group. group yeah. And your edges are labeled by elements from this group. Yes. And now you want to hit all the cycles such that if you walk along the cycle and mm -hmm. take ah, you're non -zero. A group operation and you get something non zero. I'm not so sure. So yeah, I, I forgot to say, but why we believe that this doesn't work? Uh, it's actually um, so the, the theorem by Shen et al. It only works when uh, the, the length is one mod p, mod p. Okay, so, so this is a very specific setting. So I, I assume that your, your, your setting will work. I mean, you can play around this. And then they have, cont I mean, they have example of, of graph where this doesn't hold when, when the, the length is not, uh, it's not one. Month. So uh, I assume, assume it should work with your case. Yeah. Other questions? If there are no other questions, I'd like to thank you and one again all this. <laughs> Thank you.